The Ace Attorney series of games is a franchise loved by many around the world for its humor, lovable cast of characters, intriguing storytelling, and immersive gameplay. The series is now six installments deep, with three spin-off series for a total of 11 games. However, you might wonder, how did the series get its start? What inspired series creator Shu Takumi to create what would become one of Capcom's most appreciated licenses? My name is Marcelo, and welcome to Objection, an Ace Attorney documentary. Objection! Hold it! Let's start off by diving a little into the early life of Shu Takumi. Takumi was born on May 2nd of 1971 in Japan. He started his career at Capcom in 1994 alongside Hideki Kamiya, the creator of titles such as Bayonetta, Devil May Cry, Okami, and Beautiful Joe. The first game he worked on was an interactive movie named Gaku no Kawaii Uwasa, Hanako-san Gakitai, a game adaptation of an anime series of the same name released in 1995 for the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation 1. Takumi was named planner of the project, despite his lack of experience. However, due to the director juggling lots of other projects, he ended up with a lot of freedom when it came to the conception of the game. After that, Takumi would come up with various concepts for musical, educational, and mystery games. However, none of them would become full-fledged projects. Sometime after, Takumi was brought into Shinji Mikami's Biohazard team, Biohazard being the Japanese name for the Resident Evil series. Mikami is well known for being the one behind the series, and so the two men worked in an old studio called Production Studio 4. That studio was active from the late 90s up until 2005, and was led by Mikami. Studio 4 produced most of the Resident Evils released during that time period, with exceptions including Resident Evil Zero, The Survivor Games, and Resident Evil Outbreak. Takumi was brought in to work on a game called Dino Crisis, a horror game that took inspiration from Resident Evil's RPG mechanics and relied on physical puzzles that the player would need to solve in order to progress. While the team was hard at work, the project had to be put on hold in early 1997 for three months, because the team needed help with the development of the prototype of Resident Evil 2. When the project was reinstated, the parts Takumi had worked on were not preserved, and in the end he ended up being the planner for some of the stages in the early parts of the game. Later on, he was put as the director for Dino Crisis' sequel, which was released in September 2000. Some time passed, and in the same year of 2000, Mikami gave Takumi six months to create any game he wanted to make. Since the Gakko no Kawaii days, Takumi had wanted to make a mystery game, and the main reason why seems to be due to an incident that happened to him in the second grade. While playing in the schoolyard, Takumi found a homemade piggy bank which consisted of a can with origami stuck outside. In it, he found a 5 yen coin which he took, and ran home without asking himself too many questions. The next day in class, he was accused of theft, and forced to apologize to a female classmate he didn't know by his teacher. It's only later that Takumi hypothesized that someone had put the piggy bank made in class in the schoolyard, and someone noticed him picking up the 5 yen coin. That incident stuck with him for years, and would become the basis for the backstory of the series' protagonist, Phoenix Wright. The initial concept Takumi had in mind was of a detective who would find lies and contradictions in people's statements. The game would have started with the detective discovering a dead body inside of his office. He would then have to defend himself in court due to his lawyer being useless. Takumi realized that his concept didn't have much to do with detective work, and instead decided that a courtroom would be a more appropriate setting. The legal setting was inspired by the state of Japan's legal system at the time, in which the job of a defense lawyer was considered one of the hardest jobs because the Japanese system has a prosecution rate of 99%, with most not being able to win a case through their entire career. He wanted to create an underdog character who had to fight in a system heavily biased against him. Takumi and his team then went to several trials, but after seeing how calm and homely the trials in reality were, he decided to ignore this, and instead chose to take a more dramatic approach in order to make the trials more exciting. Takumi explained that his main inspirations were Perry Mason, a criminal defense lawyer series that follows a similar structure as Ace Attorney, in which the defense has to prove his client's innocence and then find the true culprit. He also mentioned being inspired by Columbo, most notably by the series' habit of showing the culprit at the beginning of the episode, and having the mystery being how the culprit committed their crime. The concept was taken, and would be repeated in every first case in the series. Another inspiration mentioned was A. Aichiru, a Japanese series of mystery novels created by Tsuma Awasaka. 
The first Gyakuten Saibon game, localized as Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, was made by a small team led by Shu Takami. They finished developing the game in 10 months. Since at the time he wasn't sure whether the game would ever come outside of Japan, he avoided using anything too specific to Japanese culture. When he asked Mikami whether the game would be released in the rest of the world, he said, of course not. No way. That led to Takami taking much more freedom when making the following two games. The game was released in Japan on October 12, 2001, on the Nintendo Game Boy Advance. It was originally meant to release on the Game Boy Color, but after seeing a demo of Mega Man Battle Network on a prototype of the Game Boy Advance, the team were excited by the upcoming handheld, and thus shifted development for it. The story follows rookie defense attorney Naruhodo Ryuchi, localized as Phoenix Wright, as he begins his career. The player follows Phoenix through four cases labeled as episodes. While the first one jumps straight into the trial, something that would be repeated in later installments, the three following cases are separated into investigation and trial segments. While investigating, the game plays like a point-and-click in which the player has to click on items that stand out in order to gain information. They also have to talk to various characters, and sometimes present them with the items they've found to progress further. When the investigation is over, the trial starts. Here, the player does a cross-examination in which they listen to witness testimonies and do a combination of pressing for more information or presenting evidence that contradicts the witness's testimony. At various times, the player will have to decide whether to follow a certain line of questioning, and if they choose to pursue, they will have to present the right evidence to make their case. The goal in every Ace Attorney case is to not only prove Phoenix's client's innocence, but also to find the real culprit of the case, just like Perry Mason. All of these elements led to immense success. The funny dialogue, wacky characters, and intense court drama led to the game selling more than 62,000 copies. The game received a remake on the DS on September 15, 2005 in Japan, with some additions here and there. Alongside a brand new case, the player could now use the touchscreen to present evidence, but also use the DS microphone to shout, hold it, take that, and obviously the iconic objection. That version of the game would be the one to get localized as Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, and would release on October 11, 2005 in North America, and on March 31, 2006 in Europe. The localization of Ace Attorney is a pretty funny subject. First off, since a lot of the names in the Japanese versions are puns, for example, Naruhodo literally means I see, the localization team has done the same when changing the names of the characters in English. For example, Dick Gumshoe, Lotta Hart, Winston Payne. Due to this, and a part in the first trial where time difference becomes relevant, the game was thought by many to take place in Los Angeles. Remember earlier when I said that Takumi didn't use things that were too specific in Japan in the first game? Well, that went out of the way in the second game. And so, Phoenix ends up visiting a clearly traditional Japanese village, with people living about wearing kimonos, and with magatamas hanging around their neck in what's supposed to be the United States. Fans took to calling the setting of the game's Japalifornia as a joke referencing this. However, Janet Tsu, one of the localizers for the series, explained that the English version of the games take place in an alternate universe, where Japanese immigration into the United States wasn't as strict as it was in real life, with laws like the California Alien Land Law of 1913, which led to that culture flourishing inside the country. After the development of the first game was finished, Mikami proposed to Takumi that they should make a trilogy, and end it all with a grand final case. Taken by the idea, Takumi's development of the newest installment of the series started right away. The producer, Atsushi Inaba, asked Takumi to write the script for five episodes in three and a half months before the game could go into full production. Considering it took Takumi a whole month to write even one of the first game's episodes, he had to work really hard to meet that deadline. Due to memory cartridge problems, one of the cases had to be cut. However, it was reused as the third case in the third game. After presenting his work to Inaba, the latter then asked him to come up with a new gameplay element to add to the investigations. Since he didn't want to change the formula too much, and that he wanted his mother to be able to play through the game, Takumi came up with the idea of Cyclocks, which are essentially the lies that certain characters hide deep within themselves. The player would break through those locks using the evidence they found during the investigations to keep up the general theme of finding contradictions and exposing lies. Feedback from the first game was very influential in the making of the sequel. For example, the tutorial level from the first game was really appreciated by players, and as such the team wanted to have the same thing in the second game. Since in the first game Phoenix was a rookie, Takumi had to give him temporary amnesia in order to make it feel more natural. Another important element was that Miles Edgeworth, Phoenix's rival, was meant to prosecute every case in the second game. 
However, after hearing of how popular he was, the team didn't feel it made sense for a supposed prodigy to lose so much, and so they created the character of Francisca von Karma to serve as a prosecutor instead, and save Edgeworth for the final case. Episode 3 featured circus and magic, because Takami likes to do magic tricks as a hobby. Pearl Fay, Maya's cousin, was also originally supposed to be her rival, and would only appear in the second episode. However, Takami grew fond of Pearl's character, and decided to add her in the following episodes. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Justice for All, would release on October 18, 2002 in Japan for the Game Boy Advance, and would then be re-released on the Nintendo DS internationally on January 16, 2006, and March 16, 2007, for North America and Europe respectively. Other than the psych locks that Phoenix could see using the new Magatama item, the only other addition to the sequel was the ability to present profiles as evidence, which wasn't possible before. Despite not shaking the formula very much, Justice for All was another resounding success, because the game kept what made the first game so loved. The humor, story, and drama were nicely executed. With two games now out of the way, Takami and his team could now focus on the last installment of the trilogy, which would feature the grand finale he talked about with Mikami. As with Justice for All, Takami didn't want to change much, he wanted to keep the same characters presented with the same graphics for continuity's sake, and avoid having one game looking much worse than the others. As a result, he also had no plans to have any new gameplay elements, as he was satisfied with the inclusion of Cyclops in the previous entry. He wanted the series to end with this next game. In a 2014 interview with the official Nintendo magazine, Takumi stated, quote, I felt that Phoenix's story had been told, and that the series should not continue, he explained. Knowing when to end a story is very important, and I wanted to avoid dragging it out and having it become a shadow of its former self. Just as with the previous games, the team wanted to start the game with a tutorial level. However, since he had already made Phoenix an amnesiac in Justice for All, Takumi was at a loss as to what to do. That's when he thought of a flashback in which Phoenix's mentor, Mia Fey, would participate in her very first trial, mirroring the first case of the series. This led to the overall theme of flashbacks becoming central to the plot of this final game. He also wanted to make Mia go up against a rookie Edgeworth, but since both of them have been established as never having lost a case before, he created the character of Terry Falls, whose actions managed to keep both of their records clean. The game's main theme was not everything is always what it seems on the surface, according to Janet Sue's 2014 Capcom Unity's blog post. The development of the final game was filled with a couple of hardware problems, the main one being that the game was 2.3 times bigger in content than its predecessors, and so was too big to fit inside of a Game Boy Advanced cartridge. The team then had to circumvent this problem by creating better ways to compress graphical data, and better structures to store data. Takumi found that navigating around these issues was a fun experience for him and the team. However, they still had to cut some content like the sprite of a younger version of Gumshoe who simply got a new coat, Art of Mia, Phoenix and Edward that got cut from the game, the character Wendy Oldbag was meant to appear but got cut, only to get reinstated as a cameo at the very end when the team saw they could fit her in there. Another small change was in Grossberg's design, whose coat changed from brown to red to avoid him blending too much with the brown courtroom. When creating the new prosecutor, Godot, Tatsuro Iwamoto, the series' art director, said that he was inspired by Blade Runner's Rutger Hauer. He was originally supposed to be smoking and drinking whiskey, but Takami thought that it would give a bad example to children, so he settled on coffee instead. Plus, since Hideki Kamiya joined Capcom at around the same time as Takumi, and their desks were near each other, the former had asked for a voiceover role since the Justice for All days, and so Takumi gave him the role of Godot. After being explained Godot's character, Kamiya reportedly tried to get into character, and shouted, OBJECTION, BABY! Takumi liked the take, but since the speech bubble only read OBJECTION, they couldn't keep it. And so on January 23rd, 2004, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulation, would release in Japan on the Nintendo Game Boy Advance, with a localization releasing in the game's DS re-release, just like the previous entries on October 27, 2007 in North America, and October 3, 2008 in Europe. Despite not changing anything to the formula, Trials and Tribulation is widely regarded as the best game in the whole franchise, most notably thanks to its final case that served as the climax for the trilogy. All the development the various characters experienced throughout this three-game-long story shined brightly into what is considered by many fans the best case in the series. Be it in terms of drama, tension, or music, this entry nailed everything. It truly was the grand finale that Mikami and Takumi envisioned three years prior. The first three GBA games saw a number of re-releases over the years. First off are the DS remakes from which we got the game localized, 
except for the first game in which they added an extra case called Rise from the Ashes. The other two games' remakes simply upgraded the graphics and changed the controls to fit the DS and allowed the use of the microphone. The Japanese versions of the games were also released to PC, with the first one releasing on December 5, 2005, and the other two releasing simultaneously on March 31, 2006. The next stop for Ace Attorney re-releases is surprisingly the Nintendo Wii. The games were available through the WiiWare service for the price of 900 Nintendo points in Japan and 1,000 in America. The first game was released in WiiWare in Japan on December 15, 2009, in America on January 11, 2010, and on January 15th of the same year in Europe. It was followed up by Justice for All on January 26, 2010 in Japan, and on February 15th and 19th, 2010 for North America and Europe respectively. Trials and Tribulation joined them soon with releases on February 23rd in Japan, and Western releases in May, all in 2010. The only real things these versions added was the player could now use the Wii Remote to point out contradictions, and use evidence like the characters do in-game. Oddly enough, Rise from the Ashes was not included with the first game, but was instead released as DLC for it. In the forensic section of the game, instead of blowing on the DS microphone, the player could simply shake the remote to blow away the fingerprint powder. From 2010 to 2013, each game saw releases on iOS and Android systems. However, the Android versions were only released in Japan. Mobile users would also receive a compilation of the three games called Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy HD, which was released on February 7, 2012 in Japan and May 30, 2013 in the West. Following up the same concept as the mobile trilogy, the three games were once gained, polished up, and released on the Nintendo 3DS as Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy in 2014. This trilogy was an upgraded version of the WiiWare and DS versions of the games, and fixed some typos and slightly modified the script. That same trilogy would get upgraded again, and released on Steam, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation 4 in 2019. Despite feeling that Phoenix's story was over with Trials and Tribulations, Takami found himself working on the series again when it was decided that a fourth game was to be made. In order to shake things up, he decided to introduce a new protagonist. He initially did not want to include Phoenix at all, but he was forced to by Capcom executives who also wished for him to include Japan's new lay judge system. Kazuya Nari was brought in as character designer. He had previously done the new art for Rise from the Ashes. While thinking of ideas for a protagonist, Takumi suggested having the judge be the protagonist due to his popularity, but that idea was rejected in favor of someone younger. Takumi had some difficulty creating the protagonist Apollo because so much of himself was put into Phoenix already. Therefore, he opted to have Apollo be the reverse of Phoenix. As a result, the new protagonist was much more aggressive, passionate, and youthful than Phoenix was. Apollo's assistant, Trucy Wright, was also made as an opposite to Phoenix's assistant, Maya Fey. The team, which consisted of 28 staff members, originally wanted the game to be fully in 3D, but decided instead to improve on the series' 2D style and include some 3D elements. The team also partnered up with Japan's Ministry of Justice to promote the game because it had featured Japan's new lay judge system. The game was even presented at the Ministry's head office. Finally, the fourth installment in the series, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, went up on shelves on April 12, 2007 in Japan, February 19, 2008 in America, and on May 9th of the same year in Europe. With Phoenix taking a back seat, the player now incarnated Apollo Justice, a rookie lawyer who would be assisted by Phoenix's daughter, Trucy Wright. The new prosecutor was a rock star called Clavier Gavin, who was the brother of Christoph Gavin, Apollo's mentor. While the gameplay stayed mostly the same, a new feature was added to the trial section. With Apollo's bracelet, the player would select a statement and then use the bracelet to focus on the witness and perceive their nervous habit. Each episode also included a new forensic science investigation tool, such as a sound mixer, shoe prints, and fingerprint or using x-rays. All pieces of evidence could also be viewed in 3D, a feature that was first introduced in Rise from the Ashes. Apollo Justice was another success, so much so that after six weeks, Capcom announced that they had shipped 500,000 copies of the game, making it the highest selling game in the series. With now four games crowned with success, the Ace Attorney series was in a pretty good place. However, Apollo Justice would also be the last game directed by Shu Taka, who would go on to create the standalone title Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Despite that, this is far from the last time Takumi would get involved with the series. And since we're currently in 2007, and the fifth entry only comes out in 2013, we have some time to discuss the spin-offs that have been released in between the fourth and fifth game. 
While working on Trials and Tribulations, producer Motohide Eshiro had the idea to create a spin-off series following one of the characters in the series. He then ran into Takeshi Yamazaki, one of the series' planners, and suggested the idea to him. The two would then regularly have meetings developing the idea further. The pair wanted to focus more on the crime scene instead of the courtroom. Yamazaki first wanted Emma Sky, a character introduced in Rise from the Ashes to be the main protagonist. However, Eshiro suggested using Edgeworth instead since he was more popular. And so, Gyakuten Kenji, localized as Miles Edgeworth Investigations, started development. Tatsuro Iwamoto was one of the first people recruited into the team with Kazuya Nuri joining soon after. The two directors, Eshiro and Yamazaki, then worked on creating new various characters to use in this new project, with the first one being Kay Faraday, the one who would serve as Edgeworth's assistant. The gameplay of the Investigation series is radically different from the main series. The player used the DS D-pad to move Edgeworth and have him interact with items and people. Edgeworth is followed by a partner that he can consult at any time. He also possesses an organizer, which is the series equivalent to the chord records in which the player can analyze the evidence they've gathered. The game is separated into two phases, the investigation phase and the arguments phase. The game transitions between the two seamlessly unlike in the main series. The investigation phase has another inventory called Logic, in which Edgeworth stores important pieces of information. By combining different pieces together, a new piece can be created and then trigger an event to progress through the story. The arguments phase works like a cross-examination, in that the player has to present evidence that contradicts the opposing character's testimony. The sequel, Gyakuten Kenji 2, added logic chess, which works sort of like the Cyclops in that the goal is to pry information out of certain characters. However, instead of presenting evidence, the player is shown multiple options, and they have to choose the best approach while considering the time limit and the personality of the character they're opposing. The first Investigations game was released on Japan on May 28, 2009 in Japan, and on February 16th and 19th, 2010 in North America and Europe. Gekuten Kenji 2 released in 2011, however, only in Japan. To this game, the game still hasn't received a localization. However, a fan translation of the game was finished and made publicly available in 2014. The idea of a crossover between Capcom and Level 5 was first hinted at by Keiji Inafune, then head of Capcom's R&D management group. In an interview with Japanese business magazine Diamond, just before the 2010 Tokyo Game Show, he talked about how much respect he had for Akihiro Hino, the president of Level 5. On September 25, 2010, Jiro Ishii of Level 5 accidentally leaked the game when responding to a tweet from Jin Fujisawa from Square Enix. Quote, Huh? Oh, Gyakuden Double X? I'm making it with Mr. Takumi. This led many to speculate that the new Ace Attorney would be made by Level 5. Jiro tried to dissuade the rumors by tweeting that he was only working on time travelers, but we know that he was lying. The project was officially unveiled at the Level 5 Vision 2010 press conference on October 19, 2010 as a crossover between Professor Layton and Ace Attorney. The idea originally came from Hino, who was a big fan of the Ace Attorney series, and he proposed it to the higher-ups at Capcom who found the idea interesting. Inafune thought that Takumi would refuse the idea, but Hino managed to convince him and got him in the team as a designer. Capcom and Level 5 joined forces during development to create a game that represented both series as well. There were some difficulties, however, especially when it came to the visual style, as the art of the two series clashed. In the end, Phoenix was drawn slightly less detailed, while the Professor was more detailed. It was also the first time that the Ace Attorney series would be in 3D, as the game was being developed for the 3DS. Takumi was initially reluctant as he liked the 2D style of his series, but he eventually warmed up to it. Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney released in Japan on November 29, 2012 for the Nintendo 3DS. Surprisingly enough, Europe would receive their localization before North America on March 18, 2014, with the latter receiving it on August 29th. The gameplay was separated into an investigation phase where Layton would be the lead and explore various places looking for clues, and a trial phase in where Phoenix would defend his client accused of being a witch, using Layton's clues in what the game calls a witch trial. The game was received rather favorably, with an aggregate score of 79 on Metacritic. Players enjoyed the gameplay, but thought that each series only bringing in their two main characters was a missed opportunity to truly represent the franchises. Now that we've covered the spin-offs, it's time to get back to the main series. Speculation regarding the fifth entry in the series started all the way back in 2007, after Capcom's president announced that a new Ace Attorney game would be released. For the next five years, however, nothing would be shown. 
Every upcoming game in the series during that time period ended up being the spin-offs, Investigations and Lighten vs. Right. In 2008, various interviews would be conducted, however, most of them regarded investigations. As such, no concrete information would be gained regarding the fifth game. On May 8th, an Ace Attorney fan site titled Court Records released a post saying that the development of the game had been paused, because despite Apollo Justice being the series' highest selling game, many fans were critical of it, and so focus was shifted onto Edgeworth's game. On June 8th, the admin of the fan site, Kroik, asked Capcom employees about the state of the next game during the company's first edition of their Captivate convention. Once again, no new information was given other than the quashing of rumors about Takumi leaving Capcom or that the game was cancelled. A year after the release of Investigations, Eshiro did an interview in which he stated that he had met with core series producer Mine Matsukawa and talked about working on a new Saibon game, alongside a sequel to Investigations. The latter eventually came out, but information on the former was still elusive. Takumi, who wanted the series to end with Trials and Tribulation, and then Apollo Justice, expressed in an interview that he wanted to bring the series to the 3DS, due to how much positive the fan receptions have been to the series over the years. That game would end up being the latent Ace Attorney crossover. It was only in January 2012 that Capcom would unveil the logo of the fifth entry in the series during a celebration of the series' 10th anniversary. In September, they revealed that the game was coming to the 3DS, and that a demo was going to be available at the Tokyo Game Show of that year. Plans to localize were confirmed shortly after the Japanese announcement, and a trailer was made on May 13, 2013, revealing the English title as Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies. Dual Destinies was developed by a different team from the previous four games. The producer was now Moto Hide Ashira from the Investigation series of games. Alongside him as the scenario director was Yamazaki, the soundtrack was also composed by Noriyuki Iwadare, who worked on the Investigations game and Trials and Tribulations. Yamazaki took over Takumi's role as the latter was busy working on Leighton vs. Wright at the time. Tatsuro Iwamoto was also absent, opting to take a break from the series and was replaced with Takuro Fuse. Yamazaki wanted the game to utilize emotions and analytical psychology to reach the truth. Natsuki Ikawa, one of the designers, read many books on psychology, and used their research to propose concepts like goggles that would show a person's emotion as a specter, or a computer that could show brain waves and heart rates. Yamazaki thought that, quote, it was a pretty nifty idea, but rejected it. Ikawa saw this as a contradiction between Yamazaki's emotion and his statement, and that's how the mood matrix could be created, and then implemented into the game. The team wanted to keep the game simple, and similar to how Takumi had wanted the games to be, simple enough that his mother could play it. Characters, at least the major ones, were now voiced by voice actors instead of Capcom employees. Only animated cutscenes would be fully voiced, as the developers wanted to give the player the freedom to imagine any voices they would like for the characters. Eshiro also thought that voice acting would mess with the pacing of the game. The biggest change Dual Destinies brought was the switch to 3D graphics. Thankfully, the team had already gotten some experience thanks to Leighton vs. Wright. It was then a matter of improving on what they'd already learned from that time. Dual Destinies released on July 24, 2013 in Japan, and on October 24, worldwide. The game featured an aged-up Phoenix Wright as the protagonist once again, now the mentor of Apollo Justice and of a rookie lawyer called Athena Sykes. The game also featured a new prosecutor by Simon Blackquill. The gameplay stayed relatively the same, with some quality-of-life improvements here and there, like being able to save at any time during the trial, having two save files, a backlog, a fast-forward button that passes through any dialogue not just already seen ones, and a new notes section in the court records. Joining Phoenix's Magatama and Apollo's bracelet is Athena's mood matrix. During a trial, Athena can observe a witness's emotions and point out when their statement contradicts the emotion they're feeling. Another addition was the revisualization at the climax of a trial, which is essentially a recap of the murder in which the player has to select the right train of thought to solve the case. The game received positive reviews. Many were happy to see a new mainline game released after so long, and about being able to control Phoenix once again. The visuals in particular were praised, with many impressed at how Capcom managed to recreate their characters' vivid and expressive animations in 3D. According to Capcom, the projected sales of the game were, quote, basically achieved. After finishing Dual Destinies, Yamazaki wanted to quit working on Ace Attorney games. In order to convince him to continue, Eshiro brought him to Comic-Con, and a press conference in Taiwan. Yamazaki was overwhelmed by the amount of love and support he received from Western and other Asian fans alike, and so he decided to keep going. Fuse was appointed co-director in order to ease Yamazaki's burden. 
Fuse would handle graphics and gameplay so that Yamazaki could focus on the story. With virtually the same team as with the previous game, development of the sixth installment of the series started. The team thought that Phoenix couldn't be bested in his home country anymore. That's why they had the idea of sending him to another country with a different court system, which was finalized as the country of Kurain. This new setting would also become a new trial gimmick, seances in which the crime is seen from the victim's point of view. The game was first mentioned by Capcom in December 2013. At that point, they had begun working on the game and were exploring different ideas. At the time, they officially announced the game to Japan and to the West as Phoenix Wright's attorney, Spirit of Justice. They were 30% done with the game by then. By the end of 2015, the only thing left to do was polishing up and getting ready for release day. Spirit of Justice came out on June 9, 2016 in Japan, and on September 6, worldwide for the Nintendo 3DS. The story followed Phoenix's misadventures in Kurain with the return of Maya Fey, who had not appeared in the main game series since Trials and Tribulation. Athena, Trucy, and especially Apollo were still present, with Phoenix's apprentices even sharing a case. The divination seance, performed by Kurain princess and priestess Rafa, would show to the court the victim's last moments alongside statements that she would receive from them. Phoenix's role is to present whether the statement contradicts with the actual vision shown in the seance. Spirit of Justice was once again a generally well-received title. Despite the seances being a little hard for some players, the story and characters more than made up for it. Sales-wise, Capcom says that the games met their expectations just like Dual Destinies. That's all in terms of the main series so far. However, there's another pair of spin-offs that were released afterwards that we have to look through before ending things off. After finishing up Layton vs. Wright, Shu Takami looked to start working on another Ace Attorney game. However, he wanted to do something new. First, he looked at covering civil cases, but didn't think that they could lead to clear-cut conclusions. That's when the idea of the Dance of Deductions came to his mind, an idea that he had visioned since the early days of the series. The heart of the concept was that a detective would say something wrong, and the player would correct it. A demo was made and presented to Capcom in 2013. Takumi didn't think they would approve, but they ended up greenlighting the project. Since Takumi wanted to make a Sherlock Holmes game, he used him as the detective to be corrected. Kazuya Nuri, who was the game's artist, proposed to set the game in the Japanese Meiji era instead of entirely in London like Takumi wanted initially. That decision made the writing more difficult because Takumi had to imagine how people in the Meiji era spoke so as to not use words that were too modern. Since the lawyer profession really started during the Meiji era, and that it was a time where Japan was pushing to become more Western, Takumi reflected that in the story. The characters and the environments were fully in 3D. Nuri wanted the graphics to look like illustrations, and had some difficulty designing some characters due to the limited amount of hairstyles, clothing, and colors used in that time period. On December 27, 2013, Capcom announced that Takumi was working on a new game to be revealed in 2014. On the Japanese Nintendo Direct of February 13, 2014, the game was revealed as a totally different Ace Attorney game with its title, Dai Gyakuten Saiban, or DGS, being revealed on a Famatsu issue in April. The game was released on July 9, 2015 in Japan for the Nintendo 3DS. The game received a Famatsu score of 35 out of 40, and its first week sold 135,690 copies, which placed it second only to Yokai Watchbusters, Red Cat Team, and White Dog Corpse. Since Takumi had said in 2014 that this game was to be the start of a new series, it was not surprising to hear the announcement of a sequel in September 2016. The sequel, Daigyakuten Saiban 2, released on August 3, 2017 for the 3DS. A fan translation of the first game was started by a group named Scarlet Study, and on December 25, 2019, they released an unofficial patch that translated all of the five cases of the first game. Just like with the trilogy, the next games in the series would see various re-releases. Apollo Justice, Dual Destinies, Spirit of Justice, and DGS 1 and 2 all received iOS and Android versions. The three games of the original trilogy would get ported into the Wii U in 2015, only in Japan. Apollo Justice would also get an upgraded 3DS release in November 2017, exclusively on the eShop. Combine that with the trilogy ports of 2019, and that was all Western Ace Attorney fans had to play since Spirit of Justice of 2016. In 2015, Capcom France stated that they had no plans to localize DGS. In 2016 of June, Eshiro said that he wanted to localize the game, but that certain circumstances were preventing it from happening. Thankfully, on April 21st of this year, Capcom announced to the West that a compilation of the two games would be released. 
The Great Ace Attorney Adventures and The Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve would be included in the bundle in The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles set to release on July 27, 2021 for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and PC. This version will include dual audio for both Japanese and English voices, as well as all the downloadable content from the two games and an in-game gallery. To conclude, the Ace Attorney has been going strong for 20 years, and is loved worldwide for its intense courtroom drama, its hilarious dialogue, captivating music, and impressive visuals. Not all series can say that they've released six main games, and all of them have been successes. And with the incoming release of The Great Ace Attorney, and rumors of a seventh mainline game, the series is still going strong. I guess you could say the jury is still out and about when the next game in the series will be following this year's installment into the series. If you enjoyed this video, learn something new. Remember to subscribe to Game Domain and let us know why you like the Ace Attorney series in the comments. This has been Marcella with Game Domain.